Hello, everybody. Paul Throt here. I've been writing about and discussing AI and generative AI and co-pilot a lot over the past year or so, but it occurred that maybe I needed to take a step back and discuss this technology at kind of a high level. There's a lot to learn here, a lot of new technology, but also a lot of new terminology. The language of co-pilot and AI is, is tough. So I created a short slide deck that kind of just steps through the basics of AI as I see it as sort of a layman, frankly. I'm not an expert in this area, but just a plain English description of where Copilot is, where it fits within the world of AI and the various terms we need to understand to use it. At a high level, AI is a computer science that enables machines to think like humans. This allows these machines to make decisions, solve problems, make predictions, provide analysis. If you think about the internet as the body of all of the data in the world, you might look at AI as the technology that hopefully will make sense of that data. And in that way, AI has the potential to be smarter or better than any single human, since no one could do all that. But it is a tool, and it will be used by people as a tool, hopefully to make life better. So AI is really like any other technology, whether it's the wheel, the printing press, the airplane. This is just the latest in a long series of technological progressions. The recent hype around AI has all centered on generative AI, which is a type of AI that can create content, um, as opposed to general AI, which is about taking data and providing insights. Generative AI can create almost any kind of content, really text, images, music, video, software code, whatever. Um, it is trained to do so using existing content, which is of course controversial. And uh, it, the training of AI uses models. Uh, and there are many types of models, but the type that is the most common today, the type you hear about the most are large language models or LLMs, which are named because they're so big and consume so much data and they can only run in the largest cloud infrastructures such as those provided by Microsoft, Google, and AWS at that scale. The most famous example of generative AI right now perhaps is OpenAI's ChatGPT. That brings me finally to Copilot, which is Microsoft's brand for its own in-house AI services. Microsoft Copilot could be seen as uh, an underlying set of foundational AI-based services. It's built on top of OpenAI's ChatGPT, with Microsoft adding its own secret sauce in the form of Bing search results and other information that they're not providing publicly. It is an LLM, a large language model. It's also a chatbot. Um, because it has a conversational text-based, can be voice-based, but text-based interface. The reason this matters is that Microsoft is spreading Copilot across its software stack. It's integrating and expanding on it with product-specific improvements. And looking just at the consumer products that I cover, you can see Microsoft Copilot available for free on the web, where you can use text prompts to create text and image-based content. Copilot in Windows 10 and 11, bringing those capabilities to the desktop, along with a growing set of actions that will hopefully one day make it easier to access Windows settings and features. There's a Copilot in Microsoft Edge that provides Copilot capabilities in a browser pane next to the content that you might be reading or creating online. And there's a Copilot across the core Microsoft 365 apps on desktop and web, helping you to create summarize and edit content in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and probably other apps. Most of this is free, which is astonishing, although certain, some of those capabilities, in particular the Microsoft 365 app capabilities, do require a paid subscription on top of a Microsoft 365 subscription. That's true for both consumers and businesses. And there's more coming. AI is evolving rapidly, so is Copilot. Microsoft is adding it to more and more endpoints, improving the capabilities and so forth. And this is something we're going to be discussing for months, if not years, to come. Well, I hope this was helpful. 
I will, of course, continue creating uh, content around Copilot and AI in general over at Throt.com. I'm adding more Copilot content to the Windows 11 field guide. And I record a podcast called Hands on Windows for the Twit Network, where I cover Copilot fairly regularly now as well. So lots more to come. Thanks for watching.